Where the thing but I have my boundaries. This girl sitting on the couch drinking coffee type energy. Exactly. Like, if it all ends, what am I going to do? Like, You're going to be. Probably doing it exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> no, just no. And so I finally was like, and I want to paint murals all year long. <laughs> <laughs> it's recording. Talking to that thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Look at the lens. Look at the lens. Good morning. Welcome to Two Left Feet. So I am Carly Hawkins. I am the artist behind Gray Works. Mm -hmm. I'm a full-time muralist in a small little baby town <laughs> called Roxboro, and we <laughs> love it. And I'm here with I'm Bailey Jacobs, and I'm the person behind the Commonplace Studio and Collective, and I. I am hopeful to be a lot of different things and nothing I haven't really dedicated or decided on anything because I love too many things. <laughs> oh, I feel that. Um, and I'm also from the little bitty baby town of Roxboro. Okay, and then also, we're literally called Two Left Feet. Yes. I feel like we would miss an Which opportunity. Right? <laughs> if we didn't call it, if we didn't tell you what shoes we're wearing. So yes. this will be a trend. You'll know what shoes are wearing in every episode. Whether you care or not, we are a girly chat here. Yeah. And that is what we do. Yeah, it's a very girly pop thing. And we really do want to honor and respect the girly pop energy because <laughs> we love it. Definitely. Okay. The Bloodstones. Mm -hmm. Bloodstones. Do you pronounce the N in Bloodstones? Yeah. Like blunt stones. Blunt stones. That. What uh -huh. she said. Mm -hmm. It's like the camel color. I got them off Depop because I color. needed work shoes. Mm -hmm. I'm muralist. We paint. I'm on my mm -hmm. feet all day. Mm -hmm. They're wonderful. But, and they're covered in paint splatters and dirt. So they're so not they the well for the purpose that you needed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are you like a, would you wear them outside with outfits or are they strictly workwear for you? For me, they're workwear because uh -huh. they look like workwear. But at the same time, sometimes I'm too, like, I'm not to say lazy, but like I just I don't care that. and I just throw them on. You know, like they have yeah. the throw-on shoes. Yes, I get that. Yeah. Okay. And then you're cute. Um, oh, I love them. Mine are my Adidas Gazelles, and they're my birthday shoes from my mom. <laughs> <laughs> and also, too, I think we should say how old we are because I think that also helps give like. Oh, like I don't respect I like it. knowing how people how old people are. Yes. Oh, so, I kind of don't like telling oh, okay, you just don't have to tell. But I'll tell. So but I wouldn't I'm 27. So these are my 27th birthday shoes for my mom. <laughs> okay. Well, I am 23. So I feel yeah. like a little I just think it's so good cuz I feel like when you talk people it's just I like to have it's so funny. You're more of a share and I'm not a share, but the age thing gets you. And the age thing does get me. That's funny that it mm -hmm. doesn't get you. I guess because well, everything it is else does get me. <laughs> Yes. Look, we're going to be pulling some things out of Bailey. She's going to share the things. But I have my boundaries. We'll push them. Carly knows this. But I feel like for me, the age thing comes in, like, I say I'm 23, but I want to be taken seriously as a businesswoman. Oh, like, I totally get that. Then it's like, uh, oh, but you're only 23. You know, like, I feel like that's why I hesitate with my age. I get that. And then people don't take me seriously. No, honey. Mm -hmm. The age doesn't matter. I, I get that. I get that. We work hard. So, then... The next transition, you'll know yes. our shoes, and you'll also know our... Bailey. I was not even recording. <laughs> okay. That said, who we are, what shoes we're wearing, because you have to include that. That's important information. <laughs> we, two left feet, we are basic... We want to share our journey. We are two yeah. artists in a small town that are running successful businesses, and I feel like <laughs> that's a rarity. True. Like... In the world of, like, people know starving artists. We want to tell you that. Right. We're not starving. You know what I mean? And That's also, true. we love a girly chat. Mm -hmm. And sharing. I love sharing. She, we're going to have to push her. But, like, you love sharing. I love a girly chat. And we're the, marrying the two. And that's kind of what, <laughs> when you say, like, what two left feet is, mm -hmm. like, you, you do your thing. She's the writer. She knows. She's good with words. We're... It's a very girly pop, girl boss, mm. girl sitting on the couch, drinking coffee type energy. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It doesn't need to be too, like, it's not just chatting about the things that we like and we do, but it's also not so serious that it's only business minded. It very much is, like, 
we want it to be that feeling that you get when you do sit with a friend and catch up. Talk about all the highs, all the lows. You talk about all the cutesy, all the serious. It's just the perfect feeling. Exactly. And then as much as it is cutesy in that coffee chat, like yeah. we're also telling you like what I plan to do with my business, how we're going to get there. Right. Like the, the, it's the meat and the potatoes <gasps> and you get the dessert and the coffee too. Like, you know um, what I mean? Like it's all yes, yes, yes. tied pretty bow. That's us. I love that. So now we're going to yes. move into our report. Yes. Okay. So we need to start that. All right. You tell me when. Okay. You just go ahead and start. All right, so now it's time for our report. So yes. I need that list. She has it written there. I don't know. Okay, well, I have to shout out the people that I'm, the person that I learned it from. Okay, go ahead. Um, I have a good friend. Her name is Claire, and she's taught me a multitude of things. She has some of the greatest style in the world. She's one of the best gift givers that I know. Oh. Um, very eclectic, very cute, very intelligent, and she did this weekly newsletter where on one of the newsletters she put out her report and basically you go through r-e-p-o-r-t and it's i think that's an acronym i'm yeah. pretty sure this is no this is not this is not a teaching podcast oh, God. okay we are not teachers <laughs> i do not know a lot okay yes she does okay <coughs> the report it's the for the r is reading e eating p is playing but we also added Pursuing, yeah, for us playing or pursuing. Mm -hmm. O is obsessing. R recommending. T is treating, and then Claire added training in there. So that's going to be the report. We're going to make this into something that we do regularly because it's just it, it makes sense. It's like a little summary. Basically, you catch up with us every week and see what we're doing. Oh, right on, right on. Okay, okay. There's so the R, the reading. Yes. What are you reading, Bailey Jacobs? Okay, well, I was a little bit torn on this because I've been reading a few different types of things, but the one thing I'm going to add for another letter. Okay. Oh, God. Um, okay. But I'll say, and this is cute, I'll, it can get kind of tie in Christmas, but I right now am reading, I'm reading two different books. I'm reading a fiction book and a nonfiction book. And the, I love when people read two books at one time. Thank I you. do that. It's also. actually very annoying because it's slow. It's slow, and you halfway don't finish most of them. But yeah. <laughs> I always finish the fiction. I don't always finish the dark fiction. But I'm reading a book by the um, my nonfiction book was actually sent to me by one of my friends, Abby, and it is written by the author that wrote A Wrinkle in Time. And oh, okay. It's um, it's like her take on faith and art and the, how they intersection, or also how like somebody that does practice faith, some like angst they might feel within the art community, like the tuck, not towards the art community, but maybe even towards their faith while they're in the art community. So really talks about how the two juxtapose. Um, one through scale one to five, five being you would highly recommend, like it's on a must read list. One, it's like, nah, Probably. honestly, I will say, I'm gonna give it a three right now because I'm still very early on, but it's one of those books that I think about a lot Oh. After I read it, so I, I think like it's very like thought provoking. That, yeah, so maybe even she's gonna get a four. Three is kind of three is kind of low balling. Um, and then my mom typically every Christmas for the last few years gives me a book. She okay. gives me a, yeah. a fiction book. Yeah. So I am reading that fiction book that she bought me, and it looks really good. It's like historical fiction, which is right in the pocket that I love. What's the name of it? Um, can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Can't remember it. So my, we'll go back with so that. My hand, but I love it so far. <laughs> so that's my reading. What's your reading? Okay. I feel like oh, it's. I should be confident to say it. it's Think and Grow Rich by what? Think and Grow Rich. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It is definitely so nonfiction. Okay, I get confused. So nonfiction is like the factual one. Yes. I can't get that straight. I know. I have been told that since elementary school, and I just cannot no. get it straight. If they really should have done two very different terms. Right? And it may... Anyway, mm -hmm. whichever one it is, it's real life. non Like, it's factual. So, yes. they're telling me, basically, like, this gentleman, Neil... I'm going to call him Neil. His name might not be Neil. I think <laughs> it is. The author. It works for us. <laughs> <laughs> well, Neil, he studied, like... Andrew Carnegie, like the uh, Ford oh, wow. and um, Edison, like he was friends with these gentlemen mm. and Carnegie was actually the one that gave him the idea for the book and he was like, look, I, this is how I did what I mm. did. This is how I grew to mm. where I went. Like you should study it and write a book on it. Mm. And then that like lit a fire under 
Neil and he literally studied these men and other successful people for 25 mm -hmm. years and he was like literally it is the like how they did it and it's literally think and grow rich like change your mindset mm -hmm. and so it like talks you through all of that and I love that kind of thing I love it she does I do I love the whole business mind like I love changing mm -hmm. like your thoughts and like your thoughts do matter and I know it's a little bit frou-frou and I know she she knows because I'll be getting on her but it's so good but I think it works like if it works for me like that's all that matters and it works for me I do so. not like the non-fiction <laughs> I love it, but yeah, I, there's a place for it. Like it's, a, I learn. I'm, it's, I'm in an osmosis type way. I'm taking in what you're telling me. Good. See, I'm listen, listen y'all can the girly bops can also join. I'm listening. Right. Well, I will read and podcast and listen. Like I do audio yes, books while I'm painting. Yes, you love podcasts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I listen to while yes. I'm painting. It's mm -hmm, definitely audio books, mm -hmm. and it's actually thinking grow rich. So I'm listening to it okay, while I'm reading that. it at night. Yeah, shameless plug for an audio book. So yeah, mm -hmm. now eating. Oh, avocado tuna on toast that's literally mm -hmm. i could eat i do i eat the same thing for breakfast mm -hmm. for like six months straight sometimes like two years straight mm -hmm. and then i move it on to something else and right now it is tuna and avocado on toast mm -hmm. with tomatoes and feta cheese i mush up mm -hmm. the avocado a little bit of salt toast the sourdough bread oh, throw on the avocado I love all of slice up the tomato add the feta and mm -hmm. open a tin of tuna and i mm -hmm. sure do put it on there mm -hmm. Yeah, we're definitely, we realize that there's a camp of those that eat canned tuna and those that do not. And there's no in between. Please comment, do you? Or is that like made you gag a little bit? I love, I love canned tuna. I, as far back as when I was in like elementary or middle school, brought the little tuna. See, I didn't do that. I'm very new to the tuna tin oh, train. See, I'm an OG tin tuna. But there used to be like, it was a Lunchables type version of the, from the tuna Way. company. I feel and like I kind of remember that now that in a little box. I like, never chose that. I Ritz chose crackers, the pizza a one. packet of tuna. This wasn't like from the Lunchables brand. It was from like the tuna brand that we buy, oh. and they used to do like little Lunchables. I don't know if they and do they anymore. Sell, they do because and I was they sell them at the store. And it was I was like, ooh, this is obviously people do not like. What yeah. I'm doing this. <laughs> but I've never stopped, so it didn't hurt my What's feelings your too bad. Though? What is your? Um, I would say that my okay. I would say my eating right now. I'm gonna do a recent discovery for me mm -hmm. is um, there's a coffee shop in Durham, Coco Cinnamon, um, and I recently with a friend tried their like hot chocolate drink. Yeah. And I've like had it in my mind since doing it. So I would say like a recent discovery for the eating category would be. And there's to clarify, hot like chocolate. the Coco Cinnamon, it's like a dark chocolate. It's delicious. Uh, hot chocolate with, doesn't it have spices in it Yeah, too? so we did the Coco Canela like flavor option. Yeah. It's very like vanilla, caramely, but really it was like the perfect amount of sweet, mm. but it was not as like, it wasn't super thick drinking chocolate. Yeah. But it, the, it was just very, it was really, hit every spot that you needed. If you've consumed a lot of like coffee drinks or like tea drinks over the holidays, which I have shamelessly. So the hot chocolate was a nice like palate cleanser. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Now playing or pursuing. Ooh, okay. And also we won't go through all the letters every time because we know we're talkers. However, I feel like you, this is a good get to know us moment. If this too. is our first, we gotta do all the letters. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. your long for bit. So playing or pursuing. Mm-hmm. <coughs> oh, I didn't give up a bread. I choked a long bit. Okay. I that hate is, when I do so that. gross, but I got excited. So I was <laughs> tell it, girl. It's the 31 day challenge. That's what I'm pursuing. That's what I'll say. That is true. It's a 31 day challenge of vloguary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So people who watch YouTube, you know, vlogmas. So mm -hmm. right now, I I miss vlogmas, and I also think that's crazy to do during the holidays. But it's vlogguary. So one video mm -hmm. a day for the month of January, which mm -hmm. equals 31, and we are on day three. Three. Day three, but I have Whoa. only one is live. Only day one is live from yesterday. Right, right, right. I'll edit day two. You, you know the drill. But that is what I'm pursuing right now because yeah. I want to gain a, I, I want to create a YouTube channel. Like, mm -hmm. and that is what. Like you said, you're a content queen. So thank you. So that's really what I'm trying to lean into. Like I've accepted mm -hmm. it now, and I love to do it, and I've really discovered it, mm -hmm. and now we're figuring out how to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. bring it into fruition. Yes. So what are you playing or pursuing, ma'am? I'm going to go with playing. 
Um, I come from a family of game players. Like, they like to play, not really board games, but like, see, I love that. Mexican Train yeah. and like Yahtzee and yeah, yeah. oh my god. Phase 10, the card game, it has screwed me over every time I've ever played it. I always phase on the wrong phase. I never get to phase 10. I hate it. But I'm trying to be a little less ornery yeah. about certain things uh, when I'm together with all my family. One being playing games. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not going to budge on the card games. Hate them. Oh, I, I love card games. Hate them. I get too into things like I hate that. them. But I'm trying to uh, relinquish those feelings a tiny bit. Played Yahtzee, didn't hate it. Hey, but okay. I have discovered. I've watched a show recently where they played Scrabble. Yeah, yeah. And I want to try Scrabble. You, tr yeah. So I'm trying to play more games with my family, and but I also really want to try Scrabble. So that's like on the roster of things I want to try. Oh, I love that. And my I'm aunt has a horrible speller. So probably so Scrabble is not my. I think that's the thing. Like in the card game thing, I'm not super. Some friends might would argue, but they crazy that I'm not super competitive. I'm also not a math girl, so anytime I feel like there needs to be some sort of like counting oh, in math. the equation, I'm dead. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna get the most points like you're not supposed to, or the less amount of points that you're supposed to get more. Like, That's so just I not. think that Scrabble, I'm kind of like, I can maybe do this. I think so. That makes sense too, Miss mm -hmm. Ryder. Like, Thank Scrabble you. makes Thank sense. You. And I also feel like it would challenge your brain to like think of the new mm -hmm. words, which could help you. Yes. And just. But yeah, it seems like, like a good medium. So and I was like, okay with Yahtzee. You get I didn't want to burn the house down. And that's really sweet. Yeah. But phase 10 makes me want to burn the house down. <laughs> so I try not to play it. Obsessing over for O. Okay, I have mine. Oh, go for it. I'm not have mine. I have been obsessing over subscribing to different people's, um, like, I don't, they're not always weekly, but let's say weekly for the sake of, for the lack of a better word, but like yeah. weekly newsletters. Oh. I have been in love with that. Have you? I have never gotten on that train. How did you well, get started on that? Well, I think I got started, again, shout out to my friend Claire. Yeah. Who is, how we even have Oh, uh, does she send out a letter? So she, right now, is, she's not living in America. Yeah. And so she is sending out this weekly news report. Okay. I love it. Like, I wait on it to read it. Then there's this, um, there's like a camp that my mom's involved with each summer as a volunteer, Hope Hills Camp, and they always do this newsletter. It, I wait on that, I love it. And then just as I've been on Instagram, I've had like people I follow where they're like, oh, I do a newsletter, and I followed two or two or three since then, oh. and I have loved it. One is, it's called like the Confessions of a Dressing Room, yeah. Confessions of like a Closet. Ooh. But it's this girl and she kind of goes through, it's cool because she'll do like audio um, episodes or she'll do just writing episodes and it is a bit more fashion based, but yeah, it's I also like very that. visceral and it definitely has like that kind of writery roots feel and I love that. Ooh. And then the other one that I love is... So is that what it's called? Like how can someone find that? Um, they, well for one I need to say the correct name and I'm doubting that I am. But someone could find it because I could say the right name. And then you can look it up. It's on Substack. And then you can just do, like, the unpaid okay. uh, subscription, which is what I do. <laughs> and then what's the other one? The other one, I'm pretty sure it's called, like, The Last Plate or The Last Supper. I'm butchering these names. But it's, uh, like, a food writer's blog. We'll find them later. Maybe we'll do that in the description. We'll link them. <laughs> Because I like, I would like to uh -huh. like if I like you, which I do, then I would like click on that and yeah. Because I'm like, well, if she likes it. I want to see. Yeah. So this one, she was like the food blogger, and she gives like the recipes, and she also kind of gives a little bit of like. So it's the person who a background. Cook. Don't cook. I cook what I cook, and it's not what most people eat. I cook like very low key see. veggies and like beans. I it. Oh, I, when Sorry. I was living in my apartment, I would just not a good cook. Like, I don't think other people would eat it, but I enjoy it. I know, I know. It, it fills me. Yes, it terrifies me to feed people because I know I eat really same. just to same. I'm like I like what I eat, but like my family gives me a bad rap. They say I'm a horrible cook, so then I'm like I really don't want to uh, cook for you. I made cabbage soup one time for my family back when we all lived together. That sounds. It was my brother will never let me live it down. So. I get it. Like, like, look, like, my food is not that bad, but honestly, it gets me out of having to cook for Thanksgiving. I just Hi. show up, you know. So I'm like, yeah, whatever. Y'all call me a bad cook all you that, want, but it's your that's fault. That's a hack right there, though. Thanksgiving. If you're a bad cook, you're not gonna get on those kitchen duties, right? I wash dishes all day, but please don't sign me up to do rice or, or, or dessert. <laughs> rice. Yeah, or a dessert. Oh, 
No. Okay. I don't okay. know what I'm obsessing over. I don't. What would you obsess over, Carly? Oh, I do actually. I what? guess like. Well, kinda. It, like other YouTubers, because I'm on this YouTube yeah. kick, I've literally been listening and watching other YouTubers, but like mm-hmm. in a way that yes, I'm watching your content, but I'm also analyzing it. Yeah, like how I've just analyzed. I, I feel like that'll You've get been a into very like conscious the bulk. consumer lately. I guess. Okay, so but I'll, I feel like that'll come in in later when we talk about our goals. Yeah. So R is recommending. Recommending. Yeah. Ooh, what are you rec- recommending? Hmm. I recommend you listen to this podcast. <laughs> podcast. Yes, period. Uh, just stick around. Like this mm-hmm. is the start of it, and I feel like it's really gonna grow, and you' gonna get something out of it. As much as it is a girly chat, I really feel like we both know, like, have learned some really valuable lessons, and I feel like we have a lot to share. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's just me being up myself, but truly, like, I don't think so. I I just think like. I've learned a lot, so I'm gonna pass yeah. it on, and I think I recommend you listen to us two left feet. Okay, mm-hmm. now treating or training? I got training. Oh, I got treating. I'll take. <laughs> That's a good uh, look into personality. Yeah. Differences. <laughs> she is a trainer. I am a treater, and it works. It does work, but I also do the treats. It works. Like I definitely oh, had a what? Stress. Yes. you know, like yeah. I'm, Yes. I'm not above tree. And I train. She does. In my own and way. And she said, honestly, she was like, you, I, I've quoted you in like, or at least repeated oh, you in my head. And I've quoted you too. But say it. When you said like, I train to be fit. I love that word. It wasn't like to gain muscle or to do anything. You were just like, I just want to be fit. And I, I just want to be healthy. That's exactly. I just want to be fit. Like, I want to fit, be fit. Yeah. That's I, all. And I'm doing nothing. I think right now I'm like what I what's making me fit is right now is my life is busy and I am on the go and I'm not like you're just not sedentary you are truly she is always oh, definitely not on sedentary. the go that's a very I good literally word. could not talk to Bailey for just one day I just won't talk to Bailey for one day mm-hmm. and then I'll catch up with her the next day and she'll be like I did this 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 I saw yeah. them I went there I got this one. Mm-hmm. I swear mm-hmm. I just talked to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, how did you not? Yeah. How did I? How am I this behind on your life? Mm-hmm. Just talk to you. <laughs> but training. Yeah, okay, so I was like the <laughs> for a hot minute. I was definitely on the like a hit style workout. Like I set my timer. Yeah. I have my three you, exercises. Hard, hard for. But honestly, I just haven't been in the mood for that. Like I would wake up and be like, oh, I just don't want to do that. So I've been going to the gym and I've been doing weighted exercises Ooh. so I tell myself as long as I go and I do the weighted because it would trip me out like I don't get super sweat well I actually I take that back I didn't think I would get super sweaty doing the weighted did. exercise but I have you mean like what do you mean squats and like machines yes mm-hmm. like like I do bicep and tricep a day like you and I would what us your mortals do <laughs> whatever <laughs> but I now I will still probably mix in a hit workout here and there <laughs> Just because I think like that's because just you're good crazy. for my. I, part of me still does just love that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like I, you put on your music, you get in your space, you set that I'm timer. Right. You just I envy go. it. Oh, but there's no need to envy it. Like do it once a week. Like no, <laughs> I, I can't do it. Can't do that it. is just not Bailey. That is a personality check right there. Like yeah, yeah. no. But I like the kind of the slower pace, mm-hmm. and I'm finding appreciation for weighted like workouts. That. Honestly, like this morning. I did weighted legs, and Ooh. it was I, I was it was kind of quick, but I was sweaty. My legs like I wobbled a little bit when I was walking out, oh, yeah. and I still feel like I'm getting a good workout in. So I that's like what that. I've been doing with training. I've slowed down. It's like my heart rate, but we're I don't know. I just like that. Mm-hmm. I, I like the slower pace. Mm-hmm. Okay, I like that. What are you treating yourself with? I think that I would say that I am treating. I didn't know if I was going to go, like, kind of more, uh, like, actually, tr- like, um, tangibly, what am I treating myself with? Or if I was going to go, like, emotionally. Oh. We're going to probably talk about emotional on the podcast, so I'll go with, like, a tangible thing. Okay. But I think that I have been treating myself with more, like, I've been kind of, I think going back to my roots a little bit. Yeah. Where, like, I will, um... I don't know, just let myself wear whatever, different yeah. clothes combinations, and, like, I really do sometimes walk out of the house and not 
Okay. We were just talking about, like, do you fix your hair or not fix your hair? Yeah, we were. Sometimes, if I take a shower, it gets fixed. If not, like, it's going to be what it is. Or, mm -hmm. like, sometimes I don't look like what my face looks like. And, but also, though, I've been treating myself to more, like, uh, I got a milk blush for Christmas. <gasps> so, I'm like, sometimes Ooh. I'll, like, throw a little blush on. So, I think I've just been treating yeah. myself with a lot of, like, um, childlikeness yeah. and playfulness and just, like, you wear what you want to wear because yeah, you want to wear it and not take yeah. yourself too seriously. Which I always have been that way, but I think that... You leaned into it. Yeah, I just think if you go through a little bit of like a hard year, a hard season, yeah. you're, if you are coming out of survival mode, yeah. you kind of... I think that's what... I'm coming a little bit out of survival mode, mm. and I'm just treating myself more like myself. Oh, rather than just like that. having to pick myself up and like get through the day. Yeah, no, it's like and it I is like a that. little treat. That does. Mm -hmm. And that wraps up. Report done. Report is done. <laughs> now you kind of got, now you're in yeah. the loop. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yes. to get to the, the juicy, the <clears throat> meat and potatoes. Mm -hmm. Resolutions. Yeah. Goals. Mm -hmm. Ideas for 2024. Like mm -hmm. what we plan, what we're planning, what we're dreaming and how we're going to get there. Yeah. Like, do you want to start? Yes, I can. I think, um... When we met and talked kind of about what our, how we would want to structure the podcast. Yeah. We talked about wanting to do a little bit of like a overview of where we're coming from and then where we want to get to. Okay. In the whole resolution yeah. thing. So I think that, because we introduced ourselves in the beginning, we both run businesses. We're both like in the art world per se in our little town. So yeah. my chunk of that is that I've started a pottery studio um, but also kind of doubles as like a, a community center and that's what I'm titling it. I like that. I like it that. fits though. Yeah. And it fits your goal too, like mm -hmm. what you want it to be. Yes. So, um, and I'm brand new, just starting in September. So definitely over the last few months, I think I've been very surprised to realize that the response has been wonderful. And I feel like I've been able to flesh out what this is going to look like a lot quicker than I thought I would. Yeah. You have learned quick. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you know, we're all coming off that holiday like sickness. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. Y'all did have a little bug for a while there. Mm. But so I think with that being said, I think resolutions, hopes, goals, um, not on the personal side, just on the business side. Yeah. Um, is definitely, I feel like, just to really be, I'm, as much as I am a creative, I also do have that, um, I have a little bit of that safety mentality where it's like, if you just, you know, I don't want to get in trouble, in the, not like I'm going to get in trouble, but like in the trouble where like, nothing's going well, you can't keep it afloat, yeah. so I can like, play it safe a little bit more but I think that what that like I think I always feel like the next shoe is going to drop like the other yeah. shoe is going to drop like I'm going to really I can do it all now but eventually like I, this is going to end in six months because it you know I'm not going to be able to oh, do it I don't like that you think like that I think it's 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 a personality trait that I have to work on that I do work on you do. but I do think that I'm trying to really not give in to those emotions as much and just really like be present where I'm yeah. at know that it's going really well where I'm at like I'm working hard to make sure that it is like a very um what is the word sustainable business mm -hmm. and with that being said like I think it deserves the fullness of my attention where like I'm not half a mind in the future yeah. planning for when it ends what I'll do then but I'm just like it's it's going great now and how can I be really steady in that um so that's like just more on like an emotional yeah. level I have a question mm -hmm. so you have those feelings and like those worries mm -hmm. like you just started this like which will it work yeah this is not just a bit this is definitely a personal like yeah I'm like that in personal life business like that's like a yeah a trait I'm curious how you're working through that like because I get the concern like are you am I going to get like another mural booking or right, right, that, right like mm -hmm. like when's the next one because there is that little bit of stress behind it. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, how are you working through that? Like, in staying in present and putting all your effort and yeah. your time and, like, babying it. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. Like, how are you doing that? Or how do you plan to do that? Or how have you been doing that? What does it look like? I think that 
I think, well, kind of like, we talk about this a lot, but yeah. we talk to ourselves a lot. We, we right? do talk to ourselves a lot. <laughs> like, we're the people in the car, like, we're the talk yeah. with ourselves. Yeah. About yeah. ourselves. About, because that's how you learn. Sometimes, like, mm-hmm. it's too jumbled in your head, you need to just say it, and then. You need to get it out. Just get it out. Yeah. So, I think, like, just really speaking to myself practically. Yeah. And just, like, I have to really remind myself of what the facts are. Yeah. Like, and look at things in black and white, which is yeah. not my go-to. Yeah. Like, I'm not a black and white no, feeler, thinker, or mm-hmm. anything. But sometimes, I think, to bring myself back down to yeah. earth and to steady myself, I, that is, I think, a very healthy thing like, for me to do. Just simplify it. I, I agree. And yeah. look at the facts. Like, okay, you know, is the business doing well? Yes. Mm-hmm. Do I work hard to keep things, like, organized and afloat? Yes. Like, and I... Mm-hmm. Uh, also, like, are the things that I'm doing most sustainable in terms of, like, what I have to purchase? And Like, you know, like, am I getting the best deals on clay? Yeah. Am I setting the prices fair enough for it to be accessible to my community? But also keep the studio to where... For it to be profitable. And for you, it to be profitable. And for it to have, have like, good things in yeah. it. You know, like, not kind of, like, be halfway done just to save a dollar. So I think really... And also... It helps me to pursue people in conversation oh, that I really trust. Yeah. Like, I definitely... We have a lot of business conversations. We do. Um, even though our businesses are different, we can glean from each other. Yes. And also, talk, I talk with my parents a lot of, like, what are your thoughts on this? And, you know, because my parents have owned their own company forever. And so, yeah. they have really great advice from an entrepreneurial standpoint. Um, and just, like, good business standpoint. Yeah. So, I would say that. I, I think, think that's just, well said. Just telling myself to calm down. Yeah, at least that's what my mom does. Those two things, like, f- to stop your worry from, mm-hmm. like, trailing on to the future and, like, worrying is it going to work or yeah. not, like, reel it back in, look mm-hmm. at the facts of right now, like, mm-hmm. are you doing as much as you can? Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. also having that support team yeah. that can also tell you mm-hmm. you're doing good. Yeah. Like, those two things, like, just ground yourself. In your mind, I think I've also had to remind myself, like, okay. I think that's true. Sometimes I give myself... I learned this off of a show that I watched, but they were like, give yourself five minutes. Yeah. Where all bets are off. Oh, oh you get to go I into your doom. Yes, and you give, area. You be, give yourself yes. grace and just feel it. Be yes. sad. Be upset. Like Cry, stress, you need worry, to, do what you need. Yes, say feel the most it. honest thing, but after five minutes, it's over. So you need to get back on track. Yeah. Oh, so I think I'm, like every yes. once in a while, I do allow myself to say, like, I, this is what I'm worried about. And also think through, like, if it all ends. What am I going to do? Like, where am I going to work? What's going to make me happy? Like, where can I be comfortable? So I think in the back of my mind, I know, and I also have to remind myself, like, I'm... There will always be a job. There mm-hmm. will always be a job. Mm-hmm. I'm a hard worker. Yeah. I've worked, you know, like, and then I think I just give myself very limited windows in a very not often type of way. Yeah. Where I think those things, feel those things, but those cannot be, like, the main event. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I... I think it's just something that I constantly like have to work on. So what is your goal for the business? What's one or two mm-hmm. big things or mm-hmm. small things or just a thing mm-hmm. that you want and to see your business do? I think that probably the big thing is I would really love to grow the pottery portion of the studio to a place where we're able to offer like multi um, skill level classes yeah so where there's continuously intro level that's all that we offer right now we being me myself and i yeah um but where i can I get to the point that. we are we it's an it's an entity yeah but it's just us girls <laughs> um where i offer the intro level classes always but can bump up to offer where there's more intermediate and advanced classes offered but also where there is a studio membership offered where you have studio access where because i think that one thing that why I started the business is yeah. I asked myself growing up in town what would I have really loved and benefited from mm. as a creative to have had access to in yeah. the town yeah. and it wouldn't have just been somewhere where I could have gone and learned a skill and mm-hmm. I think we both feel this way as creatives as artists like that's not enough for us we need something where like we can continue in something and we can build ourselves yes. up and we can kind of like um, have a little home there. Like have a home. home. You know, yes. like it wasn't just a one-off thing. Like you Correct. have a place mm-hmm. that you know when you go, you're going to do these things and you're going to be happy and you're going to learn a skill and you're going to get good at that skill. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. like just 
have a place where you belong. Yeah. And I feel like that is very much mm -hmm. what you are creating. Yeah. And then that's the practical version of how yes. you plan to accomplish that. Last thing and then you. No, I want to hear. Yeah. The, um, I have one of my best friends. She and her sister opened a coffee shop in Pennsylvania. Um, oh, coffee yes. Spencer's Coffee and Bakery. And definitely look that up. Oh, they are. Definitely go Honestly, there. I've, they're in Pennsylvania. <laughs> I live in North Carolina, and I've yeah. followed them on social media yeah. because I'm so impressed by what they do. Yeah. I will eventually go there, for sure. Mm -hmm. But so impressed. Yeah. Their food looks wonderful. I Anyways, they're Post, the greatest coffee world. Greatest bakery. Okay, what you got? I'm biased, but um, well, one time, we have more. We can do a fill up. Mm -hmm. But um, one time I was hearing them speak about kind of, because right now they're, they are over their two-year mark. But this, really, mm -hmm. but okay. when I heard them say this, they had hit their one year mark. Okay. And they were kind of given like an overview of what it's been like being women in business, being young in business, being, you know, pursuing something that's a big endeavor. Yeah. Like it's your own shop, it's your own thing, everything I, you're doing, like you're building the blueprint for it. Yeah. When I realized Ellen owned her own coffee yes. shop, I was like, wait, yeah. how old is she? Like, it's like she deal. is running a coffee, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. blew my mind. Anyway, yes, yeah. continue. So they said that one thing that they've realized is for the first year, they did it scared, but they did it. Yeah. Going into their second year, they're going to do it tired, but they're still going to do it. So yeah. I'm in my doing it scared oh. era. So I feel like I'm also giving myself grace on the fact that I do have a lot of fear-filled emotions about what I'm doing, but also I've lived plenty of years where I haven't done it and it ate me alive. Yes. So I also just want to be very genuine and honest in those like fear field feelings. Yeah. Because you can have them, but you also sometimes like, you got to do it. Do, you need do to it do scared. It. Do it scared. Yeah. So I'm do not doing it scared right now, but I'm still doing it. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Their first year was fear. Like they do were it doing scared. it scared. The second year they're doing it tired. Do it tired. I'm curious what their third year is going to be. Probably doing it exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> But that's a good question. I, I need to ask them and then I'll see what they say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for me, business-wise, my goals are is very much... Which, can you give like a little bit of inside look of like where you came from? What Grey Works? Because you've done yeah. a lot over the last year, too. Oh, my gosh. Grey Works. A transition in some ways. So, Grey Works, mm -hmm. the start of it, like a brief little... Doo -doo -doo. Mm -hmm. Well, Grey Works started as me just... I went to a market. I paid 25 bucks. I had been drawing. Like right. I, I heard about this market, paid the 25 bucks, and then I got prints made of my art, mm -hmm. and now we're selling it under a tent. And right. Like, that was all it was, and I just made a social media to go with that, and I was really hyped up, and that was last April, and now transitioned from black and white pen and ink drawings mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. the fine art side of things yeah. and also I had another job I was also at the same time just earlier I was thinking just earlier this year I was like split between I thought maybe I should do real estate because I didn't think great works would even work about that. I literally went through the whole thing and I got my real estate license mm -hmm. like I, I was that. so torn on mm -hmm. what I should do and yep. what I should be and mm -hmm. if great works would even work and so mm -hmm. I got my real estate license I also worked construction earlier this year just to mm -hmm. help like Subsid like while I was going to real estate classes, I was working construction. I was also filling commissions for Gray Works, and, yeah. and it was just a lot. And I was just split. And I just honestly, then I was like, okay, let me give real estate. I've got my license. That's a practical thing to do. Like I know people can make money doing real estate. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I can do. And I gave it like full effort, yeah. social media, time with mm -hmm. people. And mm -hmm. I'm from a small town, so like I have the connections. Mm -hmm. um, for probably like three months and gray works kind of took a back burner mm -hmm. and that was literally to give you perspective that was probably i think may to august somewhere in there that's more than three months but i think that was basically the time frame i was really trying okay. with real estate i hated it <laughs> she did i hated it and when people asked me I would not tell them that I hated it because I was like oh my god if I tell them I hate I it then they're how, not gonna... I didn't know how you were gonna like say it yeah she just said it I did it was terrible it was ho horrible but I even when people asked me people are, people are gonna probably listen to that and be like oh I thought you liked it 
No, mm-hmm. I had to say that I liked it because if I was scared that if I didn't tell people when they asked me mm-hmm. that I liked it, then they would want to buy from my house for me, and then I would really screw myself. I think you're also trying. Like you oh wanted to like it. I wanted to. Like I you wanted, wanted it to be the answer. I did because mm-hmm. that was the easy answer. I wanted yeah. to like real estate because that was mm-hmm. the practical thing. I could tell my family that I'm a realtor and. It, or anyone at like a little holiday party that that made sense right you know like that was a safe job that made sense mm-hmm. i wanted that but i, I just i get that i literally i hated it yeah. i was miserable i did not like it i was having to like talk myself off the ledge every day like not not that maybe that's a little dramatic but like <laughs> in a way that i do think that you definitely most days felt like a lot of internal turmoil right? over you felt like it was the most right, the most safe, but like you just, I just and, hated it. And at the same time, and that Grayworks was suffered. It. Grayworks was suffering, and I, it was like Carly, you have to let Grayworks go if you're going to be a realtor. Like I, I it was at that. that. Point, maybe, but that was what it was getting to. Yeah, and I knew in my head, I was like, but I don't want that. I do not want to let Grayworks go. Like. No, like I've worked. No, just no. And so I finally was like, <laughs> that was a no. A no, exactly. How many times did I say no? Say it again. No, I did not want to let Kerwick's go. Like real estate could be there. If I need something to fall back on, it will be there. But I'm going to go hard with great work. Like, yeah. I'm going to figure out a way to make it work. Mm-hmm. I, I just believed it could be. Mm-hmm. And so that is what we did. And I slowly just like slowed down with real estate. And I didn't ever say like, I'm done. But like in my head, I was done. Yeah. I didn't ever fully say because I was like scared my parents. Like I live with my parents. So I was like, I felt kind of like a burden a bit. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, like you, you got to believe in gray works. Mm-hmm. Like I swear I'm not just staying at home doing nothing. I'm that. filling orders. I'm like doing social media i'm building it please just believe in me please like i'm trying i'm not wasting your time right i'm not just mooching off of my parents like i'm working well then in august i did my first and at this point it was still black and white like pen and ink drawings Mm -hmm. and then i did my first mural for Mm -hmm. bailey and that was in august in her studio Mm -hmm. and i just gave it a shot and i love yeah. murals that's when I was like this is I found my groove I love this and also I started really going hard with social media mm-hmm. and honestly not going hard but just leaning into I just really liked it I loved sharing I thought it was cool I, I talk a lot I feel like I got a lot to share mm-hmm. and yeah so that I, think, I just think you kind of had reached the place where you were like <coughs> excuse me again <laughs> <laughs> like it just seemed as if you really you were again not to be super dramatic but you were miserable yeah in a lot of ways and I think it was kind of like I do feel like sometimes when you are so hard pressed you be in a generalized statement just Mm -hmm. if anyone and you realize I feel like you kind of felt like you didn't have anything to lose at this point I really did because if you really hated what you were kind of trying to split your time between something safe and something that's like your deepest pursuit and you hated it it was like i have nothing else to lose so let me at least just really be honest about what i want yep and then you realized it could work yeah and then like you got a great response like i dropped real estate and Mm -hmm. it and i went hard with gray works and it got huge opportunities it just kind of worked out i feel Mm -hmm. like you got to make that hard choice and then they start Mm -hmm. i guess the world realized like oh she's doing it like i guess like if she's gonna try that hard Mm -hmm. i'll give her a bone you know Mm -hmm. what i mean Mm -hmm. but I guess I gave way too much to get to my point of my resolution I, now. I think it's all really good. Well, now, August was my first mural, mm-hmm. and now I think I counted the other day because I was like, how many murals have you done? Now it's a January. Lot. I've done, like, 14 murals. Are you serious? Yeah. I would have said, like, five. No. But, but I also am not a math girl. No, not a math. I didn't, I didn't realize I'd done it. Are you serious? Yeah. So we're like, whoa. So the goal, and through that, also you helped talk into you helped me realize that, because I didn't know where exactly I wanted it to go still. Like I know I found my niche. I love murals. Like pen and ink had its time. I think it taught me the craft, which I think mm-hmm. is important. Oh, so true. But That's a now, good, yeah. like I've learned the craft. I now apply it through murals. Mm-hmm. And I loved that, but I was like, okay, where do you want it to go? Like. 
And I really, it's through social media. Like mm-hmm. that, she, you said, you were like, well, you seem to really love sharing. Like mm-hmm. you, you mm-hmm. find your place through that. Or like, that's mm-hmm. your thing. And I'm like, let's lean into that. Mm-hmm. So by leaning into that, about that same time in June, I just love YouTube. I have always loved YouTube. So my goal is I really want to lean into those two things. Like I'm really, I've kind of fleshed out what great works looks like since last April now through construction and real estate and pen and ink. And now we're here and I just feel like this is really my home because in business. Mm-hmm. So that is my goal is to build a following and get big mural opportunities. And how I want to do that is January post a video every single month. So I have this reservoir of YouTube content for people like a hub to, mm-hmm. so you can watch and then post one video every week for the rest of the year. At Ooh, least okay. one. Yeah, that's like one that. video a week. Mm-hmm. Maybe it'll look a little bit different, but for sure one video a week. Okay. And the second part of how I'm going to get the murals is keep doing what I'm doing through social media. Mm-hmm. People do reach out that way, but same thing, like I kind of, you worry that people won't come. So Mm -hmm. if they don't, then I have decided I will now, I will create mock-up designs and I will do outreach to bigger businesses. Mm -hmm. I won't like businesses. I love individuals. I will do it too, Mm -hmm. but I won't like the huge walls, like five, 600,000 square foot. Like I want the big Mm -hmm. jobs. Yeah. I would definitely say like something that I've learned in being friends with you especially like business friends Mm -hmm. you Carly is somebody that like the saying the sky's the limit yeah like she takes that literally I do but I just think like you it's I did it always you can't help it that like it really is I feel like you to take up minimal space in the world just is not optional and it's not even it's not even in a selfish way yeah like it's not like you want to do all these big things or be within the content world for a gain of no, any like just love it you just thought like, and i just like, honestly the idea of painting like a huge you wall feel fulfilled oh my god it makes me so excited and i didn't always do that but i've now just learned to lean into it like yeah. why not dream big why yeah. not why not like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i'm gonna get like if you have a goal to make a dollar, you'll make a dollar. If you have a goal to make fifty dollars, mm-hmm. you'll make fifty dollars. So why not choose the fifty dollars? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's what I that's my two goals. Now yeah, those are my two goals. Mm-hmm. Build a social media following mm-hmm. and like really lean into it and just enjoy making content. Kind of see what that looks like. Yeah. And then I wanna paint murals all year long. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so now do you, should we do you have any other goals like what are you what are you thinking I know I was thinking through that I don't quite know how I want to take because I have that fleshed out like I know yeah I think I it's been, I've been thinking about this but this um this in the entire year of 2023 my mom summed it up beautifully Ooh. but she was like we in the year of 2023 experienced our highest highs and yeah. our lowest lows yeah. And that is almost an understatement. Yeah. So I, all of 2023, I was like, I cannot wait until 2024. I've never wanted a year to end sooner. Like, I'm like, 2024, 2023 needs to be over. Yeah. And I felt that way, like, in March, you know? <laughs> but I think that I've been wondering, like, what all will come of 2024? Same. And same. Like, what? I'm excited for it. Me too. And I don't know. I just think that. I think. I hope that as the new year approaches this time next year, like yeah. as 2024 is almost to end and 2025 is to come into the yeah. like frame, I hope that. I just am, am excited to know what I'll be able to look back <gasps> over. Same. You know? I am too. And not saying, like, this could be another really hard year. I'm, God, I've hoped and prayed that it's not. I feel like it's just, you know, I mean, but also, life is hard. Yeah. In general, even if you're not really hit heavy. But I, I am very um, hopeful. I feel like, I don't know, I feel like I've shed a lot of layers yeah. that. Like, I mean, what I've got to give is what I've got to give right now. <laughs> but there yeah. is something really freeing in that. Yeah. I mean, it's the most, like, honest, raw version of yourself, the most honest, raw version of your life. Yeah. Kind of how you felt with Grey Works. Like, yeah. 
I'm so done with all this stuff. Like, this is really all that I have to give. This is, like, what's on the table. Yeah. And I think that, that I feel that way equally in my personal life as I do, as I do with my business. Yeah. But also, too, I feel like I have a lot of people really encouraging me that, like, this is your time to really... Because I don't know what it is about me. But I do think we are different in this. And I feel like in walking alongside of you in friendship, business-wise and personal-wise... It helps me. You're de- you fall into camp with all of my most greatest favorite people because everyone that I love the most what a compliment. tend to really pressurize me <laughs> in this area. <laughs> but I do tend to be someone that I am far more comfortable being someone that like gives platform to. I love people and I love. We both. We love, love people. Love people. Yes. Love people. We're holding hands for the podcast. Yeah. We're holding hands. Yes. We yes. love people. We love each other yes. and we love like others and we love like <gasps> including people in conversation. Yes. And, and also just like being with people. We love people. Uh, but I think sometimes I am far more comfortable when I can give platform to others, which I know like that yeah. is part of what that my is, life needs to be. Yeah. Because I love it. You're and good I think, at bringing people together. You're yes. very like... Um, like that woman was saying in the store, we went into the store, and then this woman literally was telling her so much about herself. And I'm like, she was like, you just feel like a therapist. Like, are you a therapist? So because nice. Bailey just has this aura about her where you just feel comfortable and word. you create this platform. And, like, she is so comfortably Sweet. herself that, like, now you have permission to just be yourself. And Sweet. then you can create like the platform where everyone feels that and I feel like that's what your space Mm -hmm. a lot of what you want your space to be like Mm -hmm. you make people feel comfortable and like they're seen and you do such a good job of that but one thing I'm having to push myself on (gasps) yes is that I feel like as much as I love to give a platform to people I also ask a lot from people though like in the sense that like I think everybody has the a birthright to creativity whether or not you pursue it or not that's on you but like I would encourage anyone to really tap in to those things that they have living yeah. inside of them I would encourage anybody to pursue what they want I would, you Me know too. I would encourage anybody to do most everything that I typically don't push my own self to do but I think this year I'm really <laughs> right book yeah <laughs> but I think I'm really really trying to push myself or just recognize that if I am going to call people to deeper yeah. in my space, yeah. in the commonplace, like, I have to be the line leader in that. Mm. Like, I can't be encouraging people in, like, a ceramics class to really, like, dig down deep and take this seriously and give yourself permission to make something that really matters mm-hmm. if I'm not first being the person that's kind of being vulnerable and sacrificial in that way and digging down deep and making something. So I think this year also I'm being, I'm really wanting to um, pursue that in my, that's kind of like a business personal pursuit. But yeah. I just really, I think. How I do you want to do that? Like how do you see yourself doing <coughs> that? Are these like little talks that you're having in yourself? Like mm-hmm. how are you like going to stay strong as a line leader? Like I think that, well, I think that for one, probably like having accountability with other people. Yeah. Like saying like this is really what I want to push myself to do. Like That's please what hold I, me to that. I'm doing the same thing. You know? I feel like yeah. Something like personal accountability in terms of like friendships yeah. that you have. And I think also too in my I think I've just told myself like this in kind of referencing back like living through a hard year. Mhm. Like you have nothing to lose. Yeah. And if and truly like if all the things that kind of I, that I personally went through, my family personally went through, if you had to live through all of that and you gained really beautiful things in the process of feeling, of really having a lot of things stripped away, yeah, it almost, I think, would feel dishonoring to go a whole brand new year and not and not really dig in deep. And, and just cut, baby, you said it earlier, like, there is that fear of feeling like, if I do this, though, like, what if nobody shows up? Yeah. What if nobody feel like, I, I think my fear is like, I'm going to put something out there and pe- everybody else, like they're sweet because they like me as a person, but they're like, somebody needs to tell that girl. Like if you've been to a dance, <laughs> right? oh, a small town, the dance is <laughs> big. And these girls are up there dancing and you're yeah, like, like, her oh. mama should have told her that she can't dance. There are other pursuits for her, I'm sure in the world. 
But somebody should have been nice enough to her to say, you can't dance, girl. You need to pursue something different. I feel like I'm like. Oh, I think the same thing. That so I think there's like, that fear. Yep. Mm -hmm. that I think the same thing. Like, oh, mm -hmm. somebody should have told that girl that she should not have posted that. She too wild. Mm -hmm. She should have tamed it down for the. Yeah. Point. But you know what? I click post and I don't think anything else yeah. about it. Like I turn off that switch and I'm just like, whatever. Mm -hmm. Whatever I wanted to do it, that is me. I will figure it out and I will learn my mm -hmm. own lesson, but I'm going to just do it. Yeah. So I do think there's that. The. the um, I love Elizabeth Gilbert in the book that she writes, Big magic and she kind of just talks through that con the concept of we've talked about this a lot before but like creativity and ideas they don't wait this is her like <gasps> oh i love this i've heard my own mm -hmm. version of this exact quote yes. and i but believe I'm, it me too and i'm starting to get a little bit I'm, i think i have decided i i have a healthy fear of it and so i need to get myself on but I think this is literally why I'm doing YouTube now. It's like, like you need to, okay, the whole quote. You, you yeah. tell the quote and this will make sense. So basically, in on the club. Elizabeth Gilbert kind of brings to the table this idea that creativity and ideas don't, they knock on your door out of like kindness and want to be brought into the world. But they also do not wait. They are, you not, they are not owned by us. Yeah, they, they won't not wait just stand you. waiting at your door for forever. Yeah. Eventually they're going to knock and if you don't come, they'll move on to the next person. And that person might pursue it and you've lost that opportunity to bring that, like... Exactly. That, that hope or that, uh, I don't know, I think just creative thing into the world. Right. You know, so, which, for like a firmer example, say, okay. I, with, with YouTube, if I didn't go ahead, like this idea to create this channel came to me, it knocked at my door, mm -hmm. and I opened the door and it came in, and right. now we're doing it. But I could have also, like, that idea knocked at my door. I had that thought, like, oh, I should do YouTube, but then, like, had the thought, too, like, oh, but I don't think I could really do that, and I never open the door or try it, mm -hmm. and then that will move on to somebody else, mm -hmm. and then I will see them do the channel and be like, oh, I should have done that. Yeah. Like, I don't want that feeling. I, like, open the door. Like, when you have an idea, at least entertain it in your head a little while. The longer the idea lives, like, like you're basically baby in it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a little baby. You you nurture it, you care for it. It'll grow up and be something awesome. But yeah. also, if you don't take care of that baby, like, what'll happen? Mm -hmm. Like, it'll just move on, mm -hmm. you know? So, I heard it in, like, a wind. Yours was, like, it knocked oh. on your door. Yeah. Mine was, the wind will hit you. The wind of inspiration will hit mm -hmm. you. Yeah. And if you don't hold on to it and let it take you, it will blow right past you. You. that's even that's really a better way to even so it. i just those mm -hmm. that just that stuck i like yeah. that your quote stuck with you and mm -hmm. but in the same way that stuck mm -hmm. with me and i just believe it so if you have something mm -hmm. this is a new year mm -hmm. so if you have had that idea that like wind like yeah. swoosh by you that idea knocked at your door like what's it hurt just baby it a little bit like mm -hmm. take care of it a little bit let it live in your brain a little bit longer mm -hmm. think about like what's that going to look like to you mm -hmm. and then maybe like make a, a small plan of how to get there mm -hmm. like you don't have to be crazy with mm -hmm. it i think it starts yeah. with doing something small it also and doesn't you, have to be like your business that you do you don't you know, have to, like, it doesn't have to be business yeah it can be life mm -hmm. like it can be of like you want to you really want to go into like making really good keen friendships yes that's such a good yeah mm -hmm. well pursue that pursue it mm -hmm. and you can pursue it in the way like you think this girl is super cool so you just send her a little message online mm -hmm. and you ask if she wants to go get coffee and mm -hmm. that is all you that was your idea you like had the idea that i want to make super cool friendships and you're like oh but what about that girl just send her a message yeah because that's exactly what Bailey did to me. <laughs> and now we're best friends. Like, she best, like, and now we're best friends. And we just mm -hmm. got coffee one day. Like, you just never know. Mm -hmm. Like, just. And I also feel like once you make that little bitty baby move towards your goal, mm -hmm. then you get more confidence to yeah. make. Maybe it's a, like you're crawling and now you're, like, confident to run. Yeah. I, I feel like it's definitely a muscle you have to train and mm -hmm. whatever that looks like building friendships learning a new trade like yeah. get like mm -hmm. what do those two people do I don't know you know what I mean yes so I feel like that's how you can get to your resolutions this mm -hmm. year and and to I mean there really is not a lot of viable excuses like even if it's like but I, you know like tell in a really little excuses. town like there's not a lot of like access okay but then either move 
or see mm. what your town has to offer. Exactly. And not a lot of people have the option to move. So there so are always your town excuses. Has to offer. I was like, there are you know always excuses. Is? Do yeah. not. Yes. Cause Sorry, what did you say? I was like, I didn't hear it. it. I said, if your issue is that your town is little and you feel really stifled, then move or see what your town does have to offer. Exactly. And most people don't have the luxury of being able to move. So see what so your see town, what your town has, has to offer. offer. But I think I really loved, I didn't know what example you were going to use, but I loved that you said, like, wanting to pursue, like, really honing in on friendships. Mm-hmm. Like, it really can be that um, intangible yeah. of a goal, but that really is such, like, that's more life-giving than I think people really Oh, realize. I think that's a huge part of how mm-hmm. I got over the hump and, like, turned gray works in because... Yeah. I, I really, that was one of my goals last year. I really wanted, like, to key in on building friendships. Yeah. Like, where I actually talk, and we text sometimes. Like, I don't, I it was never that girl. Mm-hmm. But now, like, there is so much value in that. Like, so, I, I feel like that's a lot of it. But mm-hmm. I, your goal can be as simple as that. And honestly, that is still part of my goal, to, like, keep nurturing those friendships mm-hmm. and valuing them. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. I really have yet to, once I get brave enough to put myself out there and pursue something, I have yet to, like, find a dead end. Mm. Like, there's nothing oh, that it, I'm oh, like... Oh, I like that you said that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, there's nothing that I've wanted to... Like, if there is... If I've wanted to elevate my friendships, mm-hmm. then... You did it. You find that. Right. If I if there's a new skill that I want to learn... Yeah. Like, the world is... There's, there's so many niche... I think sometimes I'm like... What if I want to do this and there's just not opportunity for me to grow in it? But you would be shocked at like the avenues just try it that are available for you. Exactly. And, like, these you, little weird niche things that like there are whole communities that yeah. take part in them and you're like, oh my gosh. But I mean there really is um I mean the world's just so big. I mean, even if you realize I think there's also a lot of comfort in uh, you know, some people are like, well, I want to pursue this, but you feel like everything needs to be commercialized or everything needs to be monetized. Well, don't, don't commercialize it. Don't, don't monetize, monetize it. it. Do like, what you want. If you like, do feel like words just get you, then there's, you can like write really things does. down then, and you don't have to share. There's uh, just by other people like, having their eyes on them, that doesn't mean, that's not the only means of validity. Yeah. But there is a lot to be said about gathering together in the pursuit of creativity even if you don't share what you do if that is what your goal is is to become kind of more immersed in that world yeah there's just something to being with people yeah that are pursuing do it in your own space whatever it is do it in your own time if that means doing it alone then do it alone but eventually if you keep doing it know that you will hit your stride and be brave enough to do it with other people and at that point that's when you build this group of masterminds that gives you yeah the uh, confidence to make it bigger. Yeah. If you wanted to, it's all in what you want. Mm-hmm. Do you want a dollar? Do you want $50? Like, what do you want? And yeah. Like she said, there's always space in the world to go and get it. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're finding yeah. out. Interestingly that's our goal. enough, we'll follow along and see how we get with our goals. Like, we're, yeah. that's what our plans are for this year. And honestly, I have such like a good feeling about it. Mm-hmm. Do you have any last? I think that's like kind of me tying, and tying our cutesy little bow cutesy on the chat. Bow. No, I think that I think that that is a great way to sum it up. I think just that I don't know as as much as we are putting content out. I think that one of our um, hopes for this is that obviously we would love to be received in a way like maybe you heard a new concept that you never thought of yeah. and you're going to think about it or like we you're really into something that we mentioned and you're going to kind of take that up yeah but more than anything I think that we would just love to feel like we might be that first starting off point of like your partners in the pursuit yes. of more and yes the, or the person not just like like we just talked about like you yes. can do it alone but mm-hmm. if you listen to this then you're not alone yeah. like mm-hmm. we're, we're here with you we're doing it with you mm-hmm. like we're mm-hmm. We're, we just admitted that we're scared and we have nervous and we're stressed about like certain things, but yes, but we're here and we're doing it. And honestly, whatever your goals look like, I wish you the best. And yeah. I can't wait to talk to you in our next episode of Two Left Feet because that is a wrap. Our first episode of Two Left Feet. <laughs> talk later. Bye, guys. Bye.
Yeah, yeah, love. Uh, 